we'll sing there's power in the blood, and then we're going to get right into the message. But before we do, um, does anybody have, at the end we're going to pray a little more, uh, as we talked about last week, but does anybody have any spoken prayer requests, and we'll pray for this service tonight. appreciate you being here tonight. Uh, Going to be preaching on prayer like we did last week. Got some things for us to think about. Um, got the Lord's laid on our heart this afternoon. Uh, but let's uh, sing There's Power in the Blood and let's sing all four verses. But before we do that, uh, anybody got any un unspoken requests by raising a hand? Let's go to the Lord in prayer and let's pray for those requests and also for the service tonight. God, we pray, Lord, that you would just... Uh, Watch over all these requests. Lord, we know from our list, uh, Sunday, Lord, last Sunday night, God, you know all the names there, you know every need that's within our church, Lord, whether it's a spoken or unspoken request. Lord, I pray for uh, tonight, God, thank you for um, just your many blessings. Thank you for today. We're celebrating two souls being saved and baptized. And, and God, we think baptism is an important step in our salvation experience, Lord, and I thank you for them. I pray, God, that, uh, that you would uh, continue to bless. I pray, God, you'd send us one more. Uh, we pray, God, that um, if there's anybody, God, in the sound of our voice that doesn't know you, Lord, if they would accept you for the everlasting too late. I pray tonight as we get in the Word, Lord, that you would just uh, uh, speak to us, Lord, through your Word. Help us to be prayer warriors in your name, knowing that prayer is access to, to you, Almighty God. And Lord, we just praise you tonight. Again, thank you uh, for all you do. We, we confess our sins. If there's anything that hinders us, our, Lord, just uh, pray that you forgive us. And God, we pray that we'll intercede, Lord, for our, uh, for our names that we've got on our list. Lord, those that's lost in our community, God, you know each, each person, Lord, each one that's on our heart. And I pray help us to be your hand and feet. Help us band together, unite in prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's sing there's power in the blood. And then, as I said, we'll get to the message. There's power in the blood. Everybody sing it.
Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 6. We'll get right on into the message. Matthew chapter 6. Can anybody tell me, I know we, we touched on the purpose of prayer last week. Can y'all tell me what we used to uh, try to remember four ways to pray or four different ways to, or different kinds of prayer? Acts. Acts, okay. Colossians. That's right. Acts. So what did we say A stood for? Adoration. Adoration. What did we say C stood for? Confession. Confession. T stood for? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. S? Supplication. Supplication. So we know adoration is, is praising God, worshiping Him. Confessing is, uh, confession is confessing any sin, any sin in our life we may have. Um, Thanksgiving, you know, thanking God. We, I know we have a Thanksgiving each year, but we can thank God each and every day of the year. And supplication is one of the things we talked about bringing our list of names to, to God uh, to pray for, uh, intercessory prayer. It's very important uh, that we do that. But uh, I know I gave y'all a challenge last week. Did y'all follow through? Did anybody follow through with that challenge? I know I did. I hope you did. Um, and be much of prayer about that. We'll talk about that more at the end. Um, but we had, I know last week, we had 32 people here. If everybody uh, was in the challenge, uh, that would have been a lot of prayer going up, amen? And, and I, I think it's very important, uh, again, to, to go back to prayer. You know, in, in Matthew chapter 6, verse, uh, we read, let's see here, we read last week, uh, like 1 through 8, I believe it was, we may have read even 9, but I'm going to start in verse 6. And as I read verse 6, um, Y'all know we kind of reminded ourselves last week about our challenge. You know, we didn't, didn't post it on Facebook or anything like that. I think everybody, uh, we, we were going to get in the, in the Word of God. We were going to get in, in our prayer closet. Uh, but notice in verse 6, it says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter in thy closet. When thou shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. So that when we pray... Use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. And then we see the model prayer here, and he, he goes on to say, After this matter, therefore, pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power, uh, thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And he goes on to say in, in verses 14 and 15, he says, For if you forgive men, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither Will your Father forgive your trespasses? And, and, and one of the things as far as intercessory prayer, we're going to look at, at a few things here tonight and, and really look at the, the results that, be, that can begin to show up if we uh, have an increasing prayer life, if we go to God on a regular basis. But, but tonight, if Charles Hayden Spurgeon, uh, one of the churches that he had, I can't remember the name right off the top of my head, but they'd meet, there'd be thousands meeting weekly in, in his church. Charles Hayden Spurgeon was his name. And, and when visitors would come, what he would do, he would actually walk them down to the basement prayer room and, and where the people, they were faithfully on their knees, interceding to God for their church and for their community. And, and basically he would say, this is the powerhouse of the church. It is prayer. And, and, and I know today, uh, again, we are challenging our folks to, to get in, 
intercessory prayer, praying for, for people, praying for one another. Uh, and, and I guarantee you, if we do that, uh, God's going to bless. And, and we're going to see results in a little bit if, we'll, if we will continue to do it on a regular basis. But tonight, basically, I just want to ask, you know, who is going to stand in the gap? You know, who's going to be seeking his heart, God's heart, in prayer? But let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we thank you again for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you to the folks that's here in person, God, and those watching online. I pray, God, that you would bless. I pray, uh, God, help us to continue to uh, bombard your throne of grace, Lord, with, with our prayer requests, God. We thank you. Lord, for the promise of prayer. We thank you that we can uh, come to you, God, knowing that you're going to help us. Uh, God, I, I pray right now for each person here. God, you know that Eve needs life. God, I don't. I'm not you. And, and God, I pray that you would speak through me. Help us, Lord, as we walk out that door, Lord, to be on fire for you. God, to, to if we're lost here tonight, to accept you as Lord and Savior. Lord, if we're saved and, and maybe we're just going through a tough time, God, and as we walk out these doors, we can be encouraged. And Lord, we thank you for your promises. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. But as we look to, to prayer, and I know the scripture that we shared with you just now, there, there's no uh, church program. Uh, there's no re religious uh, thing, uh, political effort uh, will ever trump the awesome power of prayer. You know, what God can do in response to the prayers of his people. And what we see in prayer is we're approaching a holy and sovereign God. Uh, and, and it's something we should prize and never take for granted. And I feel like a lot of times we take it for granted. Uh, it's something that we should prize, that we get to do that. Those that know Jesus Christ, we can, we can go to him in prayer. You know, do we know what will happen tomorrow? Do you know what's going to happen tomorrow? Do we? No. We don't, do we? Can everybody agree? We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't. Uh, but, but one thing we know by, by trusting and, and, and going to Him, prayer should be the first order of things in our life. And even in 1 Timothy, and I'm going to share with you a few, few scriptures tonight, but you, you know, if you can't turn there, just listen. But in 1 Timothy chapter 2, uh, Paul said, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, uh, and that first, first of all kind of jumped out at me, you know, therefore, that first of all, and, and basically making it a priority, doing this first, uh, all uh, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time, whereunto... I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. And I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. But notice what he says here in, in verse 8. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Jesus also prioritized prayer above almost everything else. And even the disciples, there was many times that they was able to witness him pray. And one of those times we see in Luke chapter 11, if you'd like to turn there, uh, there was many times the disciples saw him pray. And, and we see uh, he basically, and I guess they actually summarize uh, this training request by these words in Luke chapter 11, verse 1. <clears throat> Notice it says, and it came to pass that he was praying in a certain place when he ceased, uh, one of his disciples said unto him, now listen to this, Lord, teach us to pray. So when they made their request, notice what it said before that. He was praying in a certain place when he ceased, one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And then he goes on and he shares uh, later on, and we'll, we'll get in that in here a little bit too. 
But uh, also, we know if you turn to Mark chapter 11, uh, if you'd like to turn there, <clears throat> he actually ran the money changers out of the temple. Uh, we see in Mark chapter 11, if you... Uh, You look at the whole whole story. I mean, we're just going to focus on verse 17. But notice, and he taught, saying unto them, It is not written, or is it not written, excuse me, my house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Now, if you look at verses 15 and 16, you'll see why he, he, had, he had gotten angry with them. He, see, he sees there, uh, you see there in verse 15, it says, And they come to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple, overthrew the tables of the money changers, and the seats of them that sold doves. It would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple any time. And, and basically, you know, they, they was not making it the priority of prayer, but we see that he said, My house shall be called a house of prayer. <clears throat> he showed the, the purposes of God's house and the meeting together of God's people to uh, a central priority. You know, believers getting together for prayer. And, and a few things I mentioned, I, I wrote down here, did he say, my house shall be called a house of sermons? Did he say that? Okay, he didn't say that, did he? Uh, did he say, my house shall be called a house of singing? He didn't say even that, did he? Uh, my house shall be called a, a house of evangelism, which he didn't say that here. My house should be called a house of, of fellowship. My house should be called a house of fun. And another, none of these things is there. While all these things have their place now, don't, don't, don't think I'm saying things about sermons or evangelism, fellowship. While those things have their place, we can look at pro, prioritizing prayer, if I can get that out here. And when we do that, basically what we're doing is we're prioritizing God himself. We're, we're engaging in him in battle, and, and he, he's able to help us as we go to him. And, and uh, a deep devotion to prayer was always connected to the success of the New Testament church. We know before the Holy Spirit came down and, and power at Pentecost, uh, we see in Acts chapter 1, verse 4, or excuse me, verse 14, For the Holy Spirit came down in power at Pentecost. Notice here in Acts chapter 1 verse 14. It says, These all continued, notice what it said here, with one accord in prayer and supplication. If you turn to chapter 2 verse 42, and we'll talk about this a little later too, but he says, And they continued steadfastly, and the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking the bread and, what does it say there, in prayers. Everywhere we turn, prayer should be there to meet us. And, and saying all this, when all of it does, we can see the following results begin to show up with regularity. Scripture ties each of these things I'm fixing to share with you to prayer. And, and I'm asking you, uh, I know we've we're kind of having a special time, I believe, on Sunday night looking at prayer. Wanting people, men of God, women of God, to stand up in prayer, stand in the gap. But one of those things prayer teaches us, and we, we see in Colossians, I know we've got a lot of scripture I'm going to share with you, but in Colossians, we will see the evangelism of the lost. In Colossians 4 and 3 it says, With a praying also for us that God will open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bounds. One of the things about prayer and, and evangelism is we, we can do our best on our end, hopefully, and pray that God will send us one more. Uh, that's been our theme for a long time. I'll share with you, I know one night, we, every Sunday night normally, we didn't do it last week, which is part of it's the COVID situation. But what's one of the things we always do on Sunday night when we close? Join, join in a circle, we've been We join in a circle and pray. And one night in particular, I don't know if y'all remember this or not, I know Johnny does, but we, we set the, the list of names 
I've got names at the house, and it's a five-mile radius of this church. It's got every person, got every name, every address. And one night, we were sitting there praying around that list. And that night, me and Johnny got to talking. There was somebody that come to mind. And before that night was up, we had one person, one more soul on that list that got saved that night. And that's the thing about it. Prayer changes things. And, and we can pray for that list. We can pray for all these names. We can pray. Uh, the main thing is seeing souls saved and, and Jesus making a difference in their life. Not only that, but going back to Luke chapter 11, I know I read a little bit about it earlier, but one of the things is the cultivation of discipleship. Now, remember in Luke chapter 11, verse 1, what did they say? Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. But notice in, in, in verse 2, he's teaching them. It goes along with, with uh, chapter 6 that we just read. It said, He said unto them, When you pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in earth, so uh, as in heaven, so on earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive every one that is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, right now it's been a little different with uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, but to be able to disciple folks, I mean, I, I pray that you know, people are hearing two messages on a Sunday that's going to help them and help them grow. But we've also got Sunday school class. We've also uh, got Awana classes starting up Wednesday night. Y'all pray about that. And, and we have an adult class, too. We'll be starting that October 21st. And all of these things here is able to help us grow and for us to be able to make disciples. And, and the thing about it, to be able to be discipled, you know, you have to be there. You've got to be a church. You've got to be able to, for us to be able to do that. And that's, and that's one of the things that, as far as pastors are concerned, or even leaders within our church, you know, we want to do our best to help you grow. Uh, I've grown up in churches where, and it might be my own fault too, but just wasn't, they weren't focused on discipling and helping each other grow. But I promise you, if we get in God's Word together, uh, we can't help but grow. And prayer is, is, is the backbone of all of it. But we've got to be able to disciple folks. Also, to have that true Christian fellowship. I know I read earlier, Acts chapter 2, <clears throat> verse uh, 42. I'm going to turn right back there. This time I'm going to start in verse 41. It says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. 3,000 souls on the day of Pentecost. Did it stop there? It didn't stop there, did it? No. But notice what it says when we talk about fellowship. We talk about that unity. It Notice it said, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship breaking of bread and in prayers. Notice they continued. They continued to, to, to learn. They continued to, uh, to be able to be in fellowship with them. And, and it goes on to say in verse 43, it says, And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles, and all that believed were together, listen to this, and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men as every man had need, and notice, they continued daily with what? One accord. One accord in the temple. Breaking bread from house to house. Did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. And this is what this is the verse I love. Praising God, having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Having favor with all people. So we can have that true Christian fellowship. Not only that, but... But if we have prayer in our life, uh, we'll be able to make wise decisions. And I know in James chapter 1, verse 5, it says, If any, man, any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of who? God. That give it to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Got to make wise decisions. To do that, we need to ask God. We need to ask him. 
It's, I mean, we're here to help you any way we can, but it's all said and done. To, to, if you lack wisdom, we've got to, to, to go to God, which is the source of wisdom. Not only that, we see in, uh, even through this, obstacles we can overcome. Uh, we see that even in Mark chapter 11. We even see in Matthew uh, chapter 6, verse 11, I just read that, we can see that our needs are, are going to be met. Because uh, <clears throat> it says, give us this day our daily bread. Uh, we can even read in, in Philippians uh, chapter 4, verse 19. Paul said, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. <clears throat> he is our provider. He's the one there for us. He'll supply our need. We also, as we're looking at, at Matthew chapter 6, verse 13, <clears throat> says, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we, we see that true worship can be ignited through prayer and, and even through this model prayer. And, la and in later Sunday nights, we're going to delve more into that. That if you go on and read, I know I stopped in verse 15, but if you read verse 16 through 18, <clears throat> it says, Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Now last week, you may remember, we talked about the first part of this chapter when we talked about good deeds or doing on before men, uh, you know, being trying for people to see what you were doing, not doing it in secret, and that's about fasting. And if you don't know what fasting is, fasting it is going without food in order to spend time in prayer. Now, whether that is a one meal time, like if you wanted to, to take a, a, a night to, to not eat supper and, and you go into your closet, your prayer room, your wherever you may go and, and to study your, the Word of God and, and be able to stay in prayer, that's what fasting is. Fasting is just going without it and not doing it. But, but that time that you would normally be eating, you would be in prayer and Bible study. And, and that's the thing I, I know I've experienced in my life and it's and, and one of the things that they that he was talking about, the hypocrites, you know, whenever you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, but they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to fast. What they were doing was they were making people see, you know, that they were fasting. It says, Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But notice what it says here in verse 17. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head, wash thy face. Notice what it says. That thou appear not unto men to fast, but listen to this, but unto thy Father which is in what? Secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. It's important. We, we can look at good deeds being done in secret. We can... Also see this prayer closet being things being prayed in secret. Fasting. If we're going to fast in prayer, do it in secret. It's not for everybody to know. You need to brag, hey, I'm fasting. Uh, and, it's, and I believe if you, uh, and I know I say this, and I'll, I'll preface this, but you know, you may be on you know, medicine and things like that to where you may not can do that. But I, I, even if it's just a meal, you'll be surprised how God if you spend time just in, in prayer, Word of God, while you'll be eating, I, I've seen it for myself. There's power in prayer and fasting. I don't know if y'all have experienced that or not, but I'm just sharing with you tonight uh, what God's laid on my heart. And, and, and what we will see when we get to this point, as far as the results beginning and showing up uh, with, with regu uh, regularity, uh, we will see revival sparked. Uh, I believe we're going to see revival in our church even through all the difficulties that we have seen in 2020. Our, our church here, 2020-21, as I mentioned this morning, God is, is just blessed in the last month, month and a half. And what that was is just is sparking revival in our church. And, and it takes all of us. It takes all of us. It ain't just me. It ain't just a, a few people. It takes all of us. Uh, as I said earlier, it's, a, it's one beggar 
telling another beggar where they found bread. And, and, and what I love about the cross is the ground is level at the cross. Everybody. We talked about that universal call that he's called all men to repentance, all men to be saved. So our verse, if you will turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, I want us to end here tonight. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. It's in the Old Testament. You go to the first front of the Bible from Genesis. It's about 14 books till you get to 2 Chronicles. It's a very important verse. If you got it in your Bible, I want you to underline it, highlight it. Um, Does anybody remember our challenge last week? Did you follow through with it? It was based from this verse. But I want God to get the glory. I want God to, to, to bless this church. I want to see revival uh, to where people are, are being saved and, and lives are changed. And it all starts with me. It all starts with you. And this verse here has uh, been a thing. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, which were called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now tonight, prayer is, is something that uh, you know, we've got to go to God about. But prayer is communion with God in order to know Him, to, to love Him, to worship Him, to understand and also conform our lives to His will and ways and also be able to access and advance His kingdom and power and glory, as we read about there in Matthew chapter 6. But, um, but I want us just to bow our heads, and um, let's go to the Lord in prayer. We're going to have a time of invitation. We'll have a song, but if you'd like to pray, we're here for you. And then after we have the invitation time, we're going to have a time of prayer as well. But uh, let's just bow our heads, and this morning, or excuse me, tonight, uh, just want us to, to focus on standing in the gap. It, and, and we've got a lot of prayer needs, uh, there may be more that's on your heart, on, on your mind. Uh, you may have that person that, that you've been praying about each and every day, twice a day. Uh, we're going to be, be continuing to do that even next week. But I want to see revival start here in Townley, Alabama. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we just thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. I pray, God, you forgive us for we fail you and fall short. Lord, I pray for this time of invitation. Lord, if there's anybody here, God, who just needs prayer. Lord, I pray help us be the church, Lord, if that be comfortable and coming forward. Let's help pray with them, whatever the need may be. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.